OK, so when we say evaluating company resources and competitive capabilities, again, it is grounded more so to the RBV concept, which looks at internal resources, right? And we are doing the internal, remember, we are doing the internal assessment. So think about the environment of business when we spoke about all of those factors in the internal environment. Right? And we, so, so give me folks, the internal environment embodies which factors? Sorry? The internal environment includes staff, managers, policies, rules, supervision, culture, climate, etc., your technological resources, etc. So, I would like, I like to stress that value chain analysis is one of the most critical to topics in this course, in that there is no exam question that you would not, paper that you would not find um, a question on value chain analysis. But the thing about value chain analysis, it is integrated to so many questions. That even though there's a question on it, even if you're answering a question looking at IFE, you might need to mention something about aspects of the value chain or EFE or the competitive profile matrix. And when we get down the road to the space matrix and those kind of other tools, you will find that your knowledge of value chain analysis is going to be critical. Value chain linking to the business model, value chain linking to vision and mission. So I will say to you, it is not a topic that you spot and determine, I don't want to learn value chain. You really must learn value chain in this course if you are to do well. Right? So they said, if I don't finish today, what I'll do, I will just um, continue next week. But I should be able to finish today. So remember, folks, the other concept that are some of the concepts we need to be very comfortable with will be the concepts of a competitive environment, companies wanting to get a competitive advantage, and companies utilizing distinctive competencies to gain a competitive advantage. So these terms are terms you should be very comfortable with and actually will be tested um, in the quiz next week. So, so we are saying here in principle, the higher a cost, a company's costs are above those of the rival, the more competitively vulnerable it becomes. Right. So it is saying if your costs begin to rise, as your revenues rise, you basically are not achieving anything. So increases in sales are not necessarily a strategy for you to gain profitability. Increases in sales plus what? Controlling costs are really two things that are consistently taking the attention of effective managers. And this is what this particular quote is saying. Pay attention to monitoring costs, right? So we know that companies can increase profits without increasing sales or revenues, simply by reducing costs, right? In other words, my sales numbers stay the same. My revenue numbers stay the same. But all I'm doing is controlling costs and reducing costs and reducing costs. And the more I can find ways to reduce my costs significantly, I can actually increase my profitability without increasing sales, right? Or increasing revenues. So again, this is your basic accounting knowledge, and you'll find a lot of accounting knowledge is needed for the course. So these are some key terms that you should know for this course. And the key terms, strategic cost analysis that you would have read, and all of these terms are in the text. Strategic cost analysis, cost drivers, cost advantages, cost disadvantages, and the primary and secondary value chain. So these are the key terms in the value chain analysis. So value chain analysis embodies in the primary value chain Primary value chain is made up of sorry, inbound logistics. What else? Processing and 
and your outbound logistics, and then you have your after sales service, etc. And for your secondary value chain. What are things in your secondary value chain? Like research and development, your human resources, admin. Sorry? Technology, etc. So we can see that the major activities perform a value chain relate are seen in the primary value chain. And the secondary value chain, the most critical resource will be the human resource that supports the production processes. So again, being good students, I know you would have read up on the value chain. So what we're going to do, we're just going to look at the structure of value chain, and then we will get into some of the terms. So one of the first things before we get into structure that all students must know is this concept of strategic cost analysis. Right? So anybody can tell me from your reading what is the essence of strategic cost analysis? What happens in strategic cost analysis? In strategic cost analysis, what happens? Yes, madam. The pink bottle there. Up. Yes. Yeah, right here, yes. What happens in strategic cost analysis? Yes, sir. Anybody? Right, you compare your costs with the competitor's costs to identify where you have a cost advantage or a cost disadvantage. There's only one thing you missed from that definition, which was excellent. You say you compare your costs, but how do you compare the costs? Sorry? You compare your costs unit by unit. You compare your cost unit by unit with your competitors unit by unit costs so final question, why do you do that? Why do you compare your unit cost with your competitor's unit cost right here? The lady here, look, right here, next to the one in black. Yes. Why might you want to compare your unit cost with a competitor's unit cost? Hmm? My friend agreed up. Why do you compare unit cost and unit cost? Yes. Especially in the manufacturing process, we are manufacturing the same thing. We are manufacturing chicken. Right? So you have what kind of cost you could have? What kind of variable cost you could have, folks, in a manufacturing environment? Sorry? The? The? I didn't hear. Is that energy? Energy. Direct labor, right? Direct labor, not on full-time contract. Direct labor, water, raw materials, right? So there's so many costs that can vary with production. So you want to be able to identify differences in costs. And as the colleague said, that is going to be linked then to the concept of your cost drivers, your concept of your cost advantages, and your cost disadvantages. So again, to understand this concept, you need to understand your basic accounting knowledge 
or your basic financial management knowledge. So I repeat, folks, I urge you, for those who are not accounting or finance students, um, uh, or those who might not have completed it, you really need to spend some time refreshing yourself and getting to know these concepts um, pretty well. So I had told you before, the, my colleagues from the Quality Assurance Unit, they are doing a campus-wide survey of students. So we normally take our break now, so I'm going to invite you to participate. I think they told me they need just about, let's see if I can pause this, just give me a second. Oh, can I pause?